Well, good morning. Today is Monday in Holy Week. It's April 6th. I want to welcome you uh, this morning as we prepare for worship, for morning prayer. I hope your Palm Sunday yesterday was a blessing, and I certainly appreciate the folks who uh, took pictures of their doors. We posted those on our Facebook page, and uh, the, the doors with the uh, palms and decorations I thought was quite lovely. And um, so again, look for opportunities on our website this week for the various liturgies. Uh, we'll have some scavenger hunts uh, for children and adults. Uh, we'll have some activities that uh, you can be involved in that will help your liturgy, your worship, be more interactive and engaging. Because one of my goals is, of course, to keep us connected to God, uh, who is our creator, our sustainer, our redeemer, uh, but uh, also to keep us connected with each other. And so please help me get the word out. Um, the best place to go is to our website. Um, just use your search engine, type in Holy Cross and Sumter, Holy Cross Stateburg. Uh, both of those will get us to uh, Google or somewhere where you can then click on our website. And so that's where you'll find the Holy Week activities. But tomorrow we'll be, uh, God willing, uh, gathering again for uh, Tuesday in Holy Week. But today it's Monday. And so we'll begin our service uh, in just a moment. Um, I want to remind you that as Anglicans, and I invite you to engage in this so that your worship will be engaging, we tend to stand for praise, sit for instruction or listening, and to kneel uh, when we're praying. And I invite you to enter into those postures if it helps you in your worship. If it doesn't, then, then don't worry about it. But just want to help um, normalize uh, and continue our, our liturgy in ways that we're familiar. And if you're a visitor, uh, introduce you to a little bit of Anglicanism. Well, our opening sentence, that part that I read for Holy Week is found on page 27. But if you're following in the prayer book, uh, you'll probably want to go ahead and turn your prayer book to page 12, where right after the opening sentence, uh, I will invite us to confess our sins. And so the confession is found on page 12. Our opening sentence today for a Holy Week is from the book of Lamentations, uh, chapter 1, verse 12. Is it nothing to you, all who pass by? Look and see if there is any sorrow like my sorrow, which, is in, which has been brought upon me, which the Lord inflicted on the day of his fierce anger. Continuing now on page 12, uh, let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against your holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and apart from your grace, there is no help in us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare all those who confess their faults. Restore all those who are penitent according to your promises. Declare to all people in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant the most merciful Father for his sake, that we may now live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentment, repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. We continue with Venite, page 14. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God 
and the great king above all gods. In his hand are all the depths of the earth, and the sea is his, for he made it. For his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness. When your fathers tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my works, forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, It is a people that err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, of whom I swore in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us adore him. Our psalm for today is Psalm 36, verses 5 through 10, and it's found on page 313 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 36, verses 5 through 10. Your mercy, O Lord, reaches to the heavens, and your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness stands like the strong mountains. Your judgments are like the great deep. You, Lord, have, shall save both man and beast. How excellent is your mercy, O God! The children of men take, shall take refuge under the shadow of your wings. They shall be satisfied with the plenteousness of your house, and you shall give them drink from your pleasures as out of a river. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. O oh, continue your loving kindness to those who know you, and your righteousness to those who are true of heart. The Glory of Patry, together, page 16. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first lesson today is taken from the book of Isaiah, the prophet, uh, chapter 42, uh, verses uh, 1 through 9. Behold my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people a light for the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, and from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other, nor my praise to carved idols. Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle is the Benedictus S. Domini, page 18 of the Book of Common Prayer. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths. In the high vault of heaven, 
glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Our second lesson is taken from the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 11, verses 39 through chapter 12, verse 3. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the, jo for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured uh, from sinners such hostility against himself, that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our next canticle is Canticle 3, found on page 81 of the Book of Common Prayer. O Lord and Ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart, and I make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me, in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. Our Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany, where Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead, and, he gave, and they gave a dinner for him there, Martha uh, served, and Lazarus was one of those reclining with Jesus at table. Mary, therefore, took a pound of expensive ointment made with pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, uh, one of his disciples, and he was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment sold? not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, and having charge of the money bag, he used, uh, used to help himself to what was put in it. And Jesus said, Leave her alone, so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you will always have with you, but you will not always have me. When the large crowd of Jews learned that Jesus was there, uh, they came uh, not on account of him, but also, to, not only on account of him, but also to see uh, Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. 
So the chief priest made plans to put Lazarus to death as well, because on account of him, many of the Jews were going away and believing in Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The next canticle is Canticle 4, which is found on page 82 of the Book of Common Prayer. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their faults. And let them turn to the Lord, and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that for which I have purposed, and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please join with me in prayer. Come, O Holy Spirit, come, and fill our hearts with your, pro with your soothing presence. Enlighten in us a love of your scriptures, and a love of the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In this homily this morning, I want to reflect briefly with you, uh, first on our bishop's sermon yesterday that uh, we were able to show and broadcast, and it's available uh, on our website. It's available um, uh, also uh, on the YouTube account for Holy Cross, and you can get to that account where all of our videos are archived by just clicking from the website on the YouTube uh, link there on the front page. Uh, but in that homily that our bishop gave, uh, I just want to focus on um, that part where he was saying the, our idols, perhaps, are what's being punished, not us, but the idols that we have and that tempt us and move us away from God, uh, those are being removed and stripped from us. And that call to be drawn closer to God, I just want to hold out that for you. Because the danger in this world, and of course we've heard the news this week and probably next week, and for some places like South Carolina may be lagging behind a little bit, not because we're behind, but only in the sense that New York has had the brunt of this and other states like South Carolina are behind in, in the sense of the suffering. So our day of reckoning, if you will, will come in several weeks from now. But nationally, we're being told that this week and next week uh, is the, the roughest part of this. And that's assuming we continue to properly social distance. So this is the week and in the next few weeks that anxiety is going to go higher and higher. And we will hear all types of talking heads, including myself, but I hope uh, my head is based in the scriptures and therefore has uh, that degree of grounding that I want to have and I want you to have also. And so in this time of anxiety, I invite you to remember that our gathering daily for worship is so important because it grounds us in the scriptures, it grounds us in God, the Creator, it grounds us in Jesus, our Savior, who will come again. It grounds us in the promise of eternal, everlasting life, of a new heaven and a new earth. And therefore, it reduces anxiety. It reminds us that the world, as Jesus said today in the gospel, the poor you will have with us. We will continue to have challenges. And that's not a saying of, of there, there, don't worry about the poor. That's the last thing that I think Jesus would ever be saying and trying to convey to us. But what he's saying is, 
this suffering, this brokenness will continue until he comes again. But God has this. And his offer of everlasting life is for any who will turn to Christ, repent of their sins, and accept Jesus as their Savior and Lord, and be brought into the family of God. And so this is a time that I think, by focusing on that, will reduce our anxieties. I hope so. I believe it will. The other thing I'd like to think about is how we can miss things. I find it truly sad that Lazarus, as recorded in the scriptures, um, now this is something to celebrate, but, but think about it for a moment. Lazarus got deathly ill, and he died. Jesus came and rose him back from the dead. There's a, there's a prefiguring of the promises that we are given through Christ uh, for the future where we, the dead, will, will rise again. But rather than celebrate that, those in authority who felt threatened by Christ, instead of celebrating that Lazarus, who was dead, is now alive, sought to put him to death again because people were coming to Jesus and they were believing in Jesus. And I find that truly sad. I, I find that sad for Lazarus uh, because he gets to die twice. That's never a pretty thing. And yet it's, it's also sad where people have missed the opportunity. And you and I have an opportunity today in the midst of uh, this pandemic to be Christ, uh, to send in money to the food bank, to, uh, to, to, to help um, with United Ministries, to, to volunteer where you can safely, to, to do the social distancing that will keep yourself and others safe. In that, we can be a calming presence because we trust not in ourselves, but in Jesus Christ. And so I invite you to enter into that as we move into the various services and liturgies of Holy Week, that that focusing will orient you and orient me and orient us toward the bigger picture. And so I invite you into that. And we now continue with the Apostles' Creed. Uh, that's found on page 20 of the Book of Common Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us and grant us your salvation. O oh Lord, guide those who govern us, and lead us in the way of justice and truth. Clothe your ministers with righteousness, and let your people sing with joy. O oh Lord, save your people, and bless your inheritance. Give peace in our time, O oh Lord, and defend us by your mighty power. Let not the needy, O oh Lord, be forgotten, 
nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts of God, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Our collect of the day is found on page 607. It's for Monday of Holy Week. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified, mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for the Renewal of Life, page 22. O God, the King Eternal, who divides the night from the, the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, draw far from us all our own desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer for mission. Almighty and everlasting God, who alone works great marvels, send down upon our clergy and the congregations committed to their charge the life giving spirit of your grace. Shower them with the continual dew of your blessing and ignite in them a zealous love for your gospel. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers intercessions, thanksgivings. Uh, you may certainly lift them directly to the Lord, or if you would like me to join with you in prayer, simply post them under the comments of Facebook or on our website. There's a page dedicated to prayer requests and praise reports, and if you would use that, I will be glad to enter into prayer alongside and with you, lifting them up to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Prayer 44 from Occasional Prayers in Times of Social Conflict or Distress. Increase, O God, the spirit of neighborliness among us, that in peril we may uphold one another, in suffering tend to one another, and in homelessness, loneliness, or exile befriend one another. Grant us brave and enduring hearts, that we may strengthen one another until the disciplines and testings of these days are ended, and you again give peace in our time. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The general thanksgiving is found on page 25. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. We pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you, and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will grant the request. Fulfill now, our Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us. Grant us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or even imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in his church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Well, this concludes morning prayer. I wish you all to please stay prayerful, keep the faith, and be safe. And I'll see you tomorrow. God's peace.